imagine stepping into your classroom for the very first time, feeling excited, but also overwhelmed. What if I told you that there are three strategies that you could implement as a first year teacher that will help you be successful? In today's episode, we're gonna explore three strategies that helped me be successful in my first year as a classroom teacher. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because we're gonna start right now. Everybody, Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our latest episodes. So welcome in. In this episode, we really wanna talk about what are the things that we wanna be able to do as first year beginning classroom teachers to be successful. And I think about my experience when I was a first year classroom teacher and the things that I learned, the things that I did, the mistakes that I made, the successes that I experienced. And the important part about being a first year classroom teacher, a new teacher, a new educator, is being a sponge and learning and growing and knowing that you don't know everything, but being excited about learning and growing into the role of being a classroom teacher, being a professional educator, being in charge of the care and nurturing support and mentorship of scholars. And so what we really wanna to do today is we wanna unpack what are the strategies? What are the things that in my own experience that I did that helped me be successful as a beginning classroom teacher, as a beginning educator? What are the things that I did and that I was able to see and experience that helped me to be successful that took me from classroom teacher all the way up to school district superintendent now. So we're gonna jump right in. We're gonna give you three strategies. So let's get started with strategy number one. All right, let's talk about strategy number one. So what did I do as a first year classroom teacher to help me be successful? Well, the very first thing was buying in to the principal's vision. Critically important. I wanted to connect align and synthesize what the principal wanted to see happen on her campus. And I wanted to be somebody who was gonna support that vision, implement that vision, and be able to integrate that into the campus culture and into the campus community. And so how did that happen? Well, the first thing I wanted to do is I needed to immerse myself into the principal's meetings. My interactions with the principal, what she was talking about, what she was emphasizing, what she was spending time really exploring and going deeper on. I wanted to know what those things were. I wanted to explore what those things were. And then I wanted to figure out how do I take that incorporate and incorporate that into my work? How do I want to incorporate that, in, that into my practice with my students? Because I wanted the principal to be successful and knowing what her vision was and then figuring out how was I going to build that into my campus culture, into my classroom culture, how was I going to make that real? I was going to bring that forth. And it was really about talking to people, expanding on what I hear in staff meetings, what I hear in faculty meetings. What was the principal saying? What did she mean when she asked for these expectations around this product, the expectations around this lesson plan, the expectation around this unit plan design? What were her expectations for collaboration? What were her expectations for being a cohesive team and being able to execute on the specific initiatives that she wanted to see happen on her campus? She had a very, very, very clear vision about the type of community she wanted to create, about the culture she wanted to have. And I wanted to buy into that vision because I thought that if I could buy into that vision, I would become an essential part of her team, an essential part of the school community, which was going to give me the opportunity to be that much more effective and that much more instrumental into the school development and the school's growth and the school's success. So if you want to be essential in your very first 
for very first year as a classroom teacher, excuse me, if you want to be essential in that very first year as a classroom teacher, you want to buy into principal's vision. You want to know what that principal's vision is, and you want to be able to put that in practice for yourself right away for the betterment of your students, for the betterment of the school, but also to give you the ability to connect with the principal and let her know, let them know that you're there to support them and help them be successful. That's strategy number one, buy into to the principal's vision. All right, let's talk about strategy number two. Strategy number two for me when I was a first year classroom teacher was all about leaning into learning from the veteran teachers. Now I had the fortunate opportunity to work with an esteemed, established group of veteran teachers. I mean, absolute rock stars, 20 year, 30 year vets who had been through all of the gamut of what it meant to be a professional educator. They knew the job, they excelled at the job. And I wanted to tap into their knowledge. I wanted to tap into their expertise. I wanted to talk tap into their wisdom. How do they design classroom management? How do they design classroom lessons? How do they build robust systems of accountability for their students? How do they collaborate with other teachers, other faculty members? How do they build a culture of high expectations? And so what that looked like was planning myself in front of them, going in during my conference period, their conference period, and trying to talk to them, ask them key questions, ask them about their practice, asking them about their preparation, asking them about what it meant to be a professional educator. Very, very veteran teachers are just these treasure troves of knowledge. And they're ready and willing to share. They're ready and willing to support you, to answer your questions, to mentor you. But you got to ask. You got to connect. And you want to lean into their wisdom, the things that they know, the things that they've seen, the pitfalls that they've jumped into, dealt with, climbed out of. Maybe they can give you those insights so that way you avoid those same challenges, you avoid those same issues. And so leaning in to the veteran teacher, learn from them, ask them important questions, ask them for resources, ask them for artifacts, ask them to share their best lessons, why their lessons were great, why they were excited about certain units that they teach, really focusing on leveraging and starting to build that trusting relationship with another classroom teacher, with a veteran. It helped me to see some of the landmines, some of the challenges, some of the issues, some of the pitfalls that I knew I wanted to avoid. But leaning into those veterans and asking them for their knowledge and their wisdom was going to help me go further faster in the work that I was trying to get done. I wanted to be an effective teacher as fast as possible. I wanted to be a rock solid instructor for my scholars, for my classroom. I wanted to create an environment where students and, and, and myself could be, could thrive, could excel. So I knew there were things that I needed to learn. There were things I needed to grow around. There were things that I needed to expose myself to. But all of that knowledge and that wisdom was right there on the campus where I was working. And you just need to humble yourself, admit that you don't have all the answers, admit that you don't know everything there is to know, and then go and ask a veteran teacher. They'll be ready and willing to support you and help you along the way if you're willing to ask for that assistance. So strategy number two is lean in to learning from veteran teachers. It will serve you extremely well as you are an up and coming, learning, growing teacher. That's strategy number two. So before we move into strategy number three, share with us in the comments below, what's one strategy that has helped you be successful as a new teacher? What strategies do you have? What expertise do you have? What knowledge, what insights can you share with our community 
that have helped you be successful as a new teacher. Share that with us in the comments below because we want to continue to build this community. We want to continue to give nuggets, give tidbits, give successful strategies and tips so that way our community members can go and implement those same strategies to help them be successful as well. So again, share with us in the comments below what's one strategy that has helped you be successful as a newer teacher. And let's move to strategy number three. All right, strategy number three. Strategy number three is all about plugging in to this campus community and culture. As a new teacher, I cannot stress enough how important it is to immerse yourself, to really start to connect and ground yourself into the school community. What does that look, feel, and sound like? What types of extracurricular activities are you planning yourself in? What types of activities, events, initiatives, programs are you coaching? Are you advising? How are you building your reputation as somebody who is plugged into the campus community? So for me, in my very first year as a classroom teacher, I was doing the things that I already shared. I was building in and buying into the principal's vision. I was leaning into learning from our veteran teachers, but also I was wanting to really immerse myself into the campus culture. So I was coaching. I was coaching football. I was coaching baseball. I was leading programs. I was already being exposed to AVID. I was already thinking about how can I plug into summer school? How could I lead different clubs, different activities? I was wanting to become a fixture, a pillar within the school in the campus community because I wanted the campus community to know that I was all in. I was bought in, I was connected, I was engaged, and I was willing to put in the time, the effort, and the energy to build up our kids. So how can you build up and buy into the campus culture and community? What types of things do you want to put yourself in into? What types of things do you want to be involved in? What types of commitments and dedications do you want to make to the campus, to the students, to the school community, to the administration, to show that dedication, that commitment? Because the sooner you ground yourself, the sooner, the sooner you build those roots and you really, really make yourself visible and connected to the school community, the faster you're going to have that imprint, that footprint into the community where people know that this is somebody who's going to be around. This is somebody who's going to be successful. This is somebody who is committed. Because more and more and more, as I go throughout my career, we are looking for folks who are committed to the craft. They're committed to the professionalism that it takes to be an effective educator. That's what we're looking for. That's absolutely unquestionably what I'm looking for as a superintendent. I want people committed, dedicated, and willing to do what is necessary for our kids to be successful. And I think implementing these three strategies is a great way to do that type of work because our kids deserve it. Our families who look to us for guidance, our families who look to us for the support and the nurturing and the growth and mentoring and development of their kids, they deserve that. And so as a first year teacher, I knew I had to be all in and I would encourage you to do the very same thing. If you're coming into this profession, if you wanna be a part of this, if you want to be a part of what I believe is the greatest profession on earth, which is educating our children, you got to be all in. So implement these types of strategies, build on the, on the principal's vision, buy into that vision, lean into those veterans. They have all these buckets of knowledge and wisdom, and then immerse yourself, dedicate yourself to the campus culture and campus community. That's the way I found myself to be successful, and it has served me extremely well over my 20 plus year career. We want the best of the best in education. We want you to go further, faster, because you're willing to do the things that are necessary to support our students and to support 
the goals and the initiative that need to happen on our campuses. So if you want to know more about how to be an effective educator and an effective leader, check out this next video because it's going to give you more tips, more insights, and more wisdom and more knowledge that's going to help you be a successful and an exceptional educator. Check this next video out and we'll see you on our very next one. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next time. Be well.